I hate resin 3D printing. And I know what they say, hate is a strong word, but sometimes it's justified. Okay, fine. I strongly dislike it. It's messy, resin stinks, and my track record with resin 3D printers has been incredibly poor. I currently have three Anycubic Photon Mono Xs with dead screens. I managed to break all three in one print job gone wrong. Yeah, it was a bad day. And because I know you're curious, I had the build plates too close to the screens. I had a thick first layer that applied too much pressure to the LCD, resulting in dead pixels. When they did work, I was constantly having failed prints due to layer separation and prints peeling off the supports. Now, I'm not saying this is entirely the printer's fault. I'm sure with better resin or better settings or maybe a better operator, these issues would have been avoidable. But for someone who already dislikes resin, these frustrations are enough to make me avoid it at all costs. Unfortunately, as a print service provider, I don't have the luxury of just not partaking in that side of the hobby. There are many jobs for which filament printing just doesn't cut it. Specifically, those that require a high level of detail or those that have geometries which are not optimized for 3D printing. So in the hunt for a better solution, I came across a new resin printer, the Uniformation GK2. As someone with little interest in resin printing for personal use, I don't necessarily keep tabs on that part of the industry. But as it were, this happens to be the most highly regarded resin printer on the market right now. And that's coming from people that actually know what they're talking about. The GK2 is form labs on a budget. It has all of the bells and whistles of a high-end printer, but with a hobbyist price tag, albeit on the high end of the spectrum. So can the GK2 change my mind about resin printing? Will I learn to love it? Let's find out. My name's Taylor, and this is YGK3D. If you find value in today's video, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers before my one year channel anniversary in February of 2024, and I can't do it without your help. Okay, let's start with the specs. We have an 8K monochromatic screen with a build area of 228 by 128, giving a pixel size of 29 microns. This is 42% smaller than the 50 micron pixels on my old Photon Mono Xs. The build height is 245 millimeters, giving ample room for printing taller models. Where the GK2 really differentiates itself is in the value added features. It has a flip up lid, allowing it to be pivoted out of the way without needing to be removed entirely. The build plate comes factory level and has a quick release mechanism for easy installation and removal. A step is included in the assembly guide to ensure the build plate is properly leveled and nothing shifted in transit, but this is just for verification. This is in contrast to the traditional way of doing things in which the build plate needed to be manually leveled and a knob is used to secure it. The resin vat also has a quick release design. It simply slides into place, no thumb screws required. The clear plastic film is NFEP rather than regular FEP. This isn't unique to the GK2, but it is a nice improvement over the FEP sheets of days past. NFAP has a smoother surface, resulting in less suction forces when the build plate lifts away from the resin vat. This allows you to use lighter supports, making removal easier and yielding a cleaner surface for the finished product. Underneath the vat, there is a built-in resin heater. If you're not aware, the curing behavior of 3D printing resin is temperature dependent. At lower temperatures, the exposure time needs to be longer in order to properly cure the resin. If the ambient temperatures are too low, the curing may be insufficient, resulting in failed prints. The vat heater inside the GK2 will kick on whenever the temperature is too low, warming it to a comfortable 25 degrees Celsius. This makes the GK2 viable for use in the garage, even in cool climates. Inside the chamber, we also have an air filtration system. The fan pushes air through a carbon filter, scrubbing it of all the nasty particulates. Interestingly, this is a closed loop system. The clean air is blown back into the chamber. This is in contrast to the setup on most filament printers in which the purified air is blown back out into the room. Circulating the air internally will help keep the warm air inside. Operation of the machine is accomplished via a large touch display. The menu system is basic, but well organized, with some convenient usage statistics tracking the degradation of any consumables like the LCD or FEP sheet. There's a USB slot on the left and a power button on the right. Any new GK2s purchased after the release of this video will be shipped with a Wi-Fi dongle, enabling remote upload of print files. If you are printing from USB, the GK2 does something clever. It automatically copies the print file to local storage, avoiding failed prints in the event of a corrupt USB key. So that's the GK2 in a nutshell, but how does it actually perform? As I mentioned, I don't resin print for fun. You won't find me printing miniatures for tabletop gaming, 
because that's not one of my hobbies either. But when a customer requests it, I need to be able to deliver. The GK2 handled these Hero Forge miniatures like a champ. The results honestly blew me away. The level of detail that I was able to achieve was remarkable. No failures with these minimalist supports, and even the smallest of features printed fine. This Darkwing Duck figurine printed well too, with smooth surfaces all around and no visible artifacts. Next, I printed a pottery stamp for a customer. This is a good application for resin printing because the font size is very small. The supports weren't quite adequate, leading to a flat spot on the handle, but the model as a whole stayed anchored, despite the large cross section. A testament to the benefit of Anfet. The next project was actually a personal one. I scanned this rocking chair and scaled it down for use as a Christmas tree ornament. This was meant to be a gift, and I was cutting it close on time, so I printed this with 0.1mm layer height in order to reduce the print time. The end product was still very nice, with the defining features of the wicker rocking chair clearly visible. I printed a few other things as well, but I'm going to save my coverage of those for a dedicated video, Practical Applications for Resin 3 Printing. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss it. The GK2 handled everything I threw at it with the ease. The usage experience was pleasant and the results were excellent. But was it enough to change my opinion on resin printing as a whole? Well, let's recap my major complaints and see if and how these are addressed. Odor. The air filtration unit on the GK2 does appear to have some effect on the smell, but it's minimal. When printing with a stinkier resin, it was still unpleasant to be in the room. I question whether it makes sense to recirculate the clean air back in the chamber, because that just makes it dirty again before leaking out the gaps between the acrylic and the frame. I understand why they did it that way, to conserve heat, but I wonder if the odor could be further reduced by simply blowing the filtered air back out into the room. Messiness. The GK2 build plate has a lip on it that is meant to prevent resin drips during transport. It's also considerably thicker than an average build plate, which means that the top surface is never submerged in the resin, keeping it clean. The vat is deep, helping to prevent spills. These features work together to help reduce the mess of the printing process, and in this regard, it is successful. But there is a drawback. The design of the build plate and resin vat results in a lot of nooks and crannies where resin can hide. This makes them very difficult to clean particularly when switching between resins. If you do intend to switch resins often, I would skip the cleaning and just pick up some spare resin vats. The vats are supplied with a cover, so these could safely be stored outside of the printer with resin still in them. Print failures. In this department, the two biggest benefits of the GK2 are the NFEP and the vat heater. The NFEP reduces suction force, mitigating the risk of prints detaching from their supports. The vat heater keeps the resin at optimal printing temperature, reducing the likelihood of layer separation due to under curing. This has the added benefit of allowing the printer to be used in environments with low ambient temperatures. So in summary, the GK2 solves almost all of the issues I have with resin printing. But at the end of the day, resin is still resin. It will always be stinky and messy. If the application demands it, I'll definitely be reaching for the GK2. It makes resin printing bearable which is more than I can say for any of the other printers I've tested. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this printer and of resin printing as a whole. Are you a fan or do you prefer to stick to filament? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. You definitely won't want to miss my coverage of the practical applications for resin 3D printing. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy resin 3D printing.